Ken, I wanted to talk about the 28 pages redacted from the commission report that they did about 9-11. With, with Saudi and all that? Yes, exactly. Yeah, I, I just see that as a complete diversion. It's it's obvious. So the, the, the Saudis are more preferential fall guys and, uh, you know, the sacrificial lambs. They're going down anyway. Saudi Arabia is the most offensive, grotesque nation on the planet, the only nation named after a family itself. Uh, you know, their involvement in 9-11 was marginal at best. They supplied the patsies for us, and uh, our CIA, State Department, you know, mollycoddled these, you know, idiots around these fake Muslims, including Mohammed Atta, who was drinking booze, uh, you know, having sex with a stripper, snorting coke, uh, who couldn't fly a Cessna. They're all a bunch of patsies. So thanks to Saudi Arabia, we got supplied our patsies. But aside from that, their involvement was minimal, if you ask me. So it's clearly a diversion from the real culprits, which is Mossad, uh, Israeli intelligence, along with traitors in the U.S. government and military. That's the, the writing is on the wall. It's in, in public record right now. If we had a legitimate investigation, we'd be arresting some of these dual nationals for shipping these uh, Israelis who were arrested on the day, caught with explosives, who failed lie detector tests, who were admitted to, on, on, as we all know, the dancing Israelis. We know that they were uh, admitted to actually having foreknowledge of the event because they were sent to that location to film the event. So why why are we looking at the Saudis and not looking at the Israelis? It's it's a diversion, it's obvious to me, and uh, it's it's all one big show. What do you think about the, right now the political environment with the presidents and the election and stuff like that? Do you think it's going on? I don't know it's a charade, but I just want to know what, what you think about Well, I mean, you know, importantly, Donald Trump is, it, it, the phenomenon of, of people around the world of seeking anything but the same old cardboard, cardboard cutout prostitutes we know as politicians, anything they see is not that, they'll take it. They, this is happening all over and because people around the Western world, around the world, are getting sick and tired of these uh, prostitutes who lie to us every four years or five years or whatever. So anything they perceive to be outside of that, they'll choose it. So Donald Trump is, is catering to that section of the American public and we see this in England as well, Jeremy Corbyn, uh, somebody who was unelectable, unelectable according to the officials. Um, the reason why he's been chosen as the leader of the of equivalent of the Democratic Party in the UK, the Labour Party, the major party, the biggest party, a man who has been uh, completely opposed to the policies of catering to Israel, who's been against every war. The people voted for him because they did not see him as another cardboard cutout, just lying, saying whatever they're meant to say, and then just voting differently. Um, so, you know, this phenomenon, it's a good step, it's a good step that people are sick and tired of the same old prostitutes, but the fact that we're being manipulated into picking an egomaniac in this country, you know, that you should be automatically disqualified, quite frankly, if you're an ego egomaniac. In a better world, you would be automatically disqualified. We need people of honor, integrity, who care about people genuinely, who are not so drunk on themselves, uh, you know, that they just openly brag about how great they are and so on and so forth. But, you know, we're moving in the right direction at least. At least we're starting to identify that the political system is nothing but a bunch of prostitutes who work for the bankers. That's who they work for. <laughs> they lie to us every election cycle, and when they get into office, they just do the opposite of what, of what they uh, said they would do. We see this in Greece with the Syriza party, you know, total anti-austerity. And what do they do once they got in? They completely reversed themselves and went right down that path of austerity. Completely betrayed the voters in Greece. In Portugal, they've just uh, elected an anti-austerity party. We'll see. So we need to get to the next stage of, of being able to have accountability. If you get voted into place on a platform and you, you go against that platform, you make excuses, you say, oh, I had to make a tough decision or whatever that bullshit is, we need to say, you're out. You're out. We need to have a mechanism in place that you did not represent the will of the people. You were voted. I actually had a law. Yes, it's very simple. You know, we voted you in on a platform of no war, no austerity. Uh, fuck the bankers; they're not too big to fail. Fuck off. I'm a small businessman. You know, if I failed in my business, trust me, the fucking government wasn't there to help me with a handout and save my business. You're done. Every small businessman knows this. Every small business owner knows this. And yet, the fucking banks who we just bailed out to the tune of trillions, are fucking wanting more money from us. They're fucking mocking us. They really are mocking us big time. Who's in control? I mean, these bastards own our governments completely. So, you know, there's ways. We, we have the power, but we're allowing this fraud to continue. Obviously, more of us need to be aware of that fraud and need to make a system in which we have absolute re representation. We can do that. 
I, I like the idea of a law. You, you, you get voted in on a platform of anti-austerity and no more wars and taking care of things back home, because that's what we need to do. Clean our house. Our house is a filthy mess of corruption. A bunch of immoral, fucking pedophilic uh, bastards who don't give a shit about the people. Hillary Clinton, perfect example. That woman is a patent psychopath and criminal. It is so obvious. Just look into her eyes, for Christ's sake. You can see the man. She's like the Queen of England. They try and take pictures of the Queen to make her look normal. She's a fucking nutcase. Look into the eyes. You can see it all right there. Enough of this bullshit. You know, it doesn't have to be this way. We need to get out of the mindset that politics is inherently corrupt and that we have to accept the fact that these bastards just lie to us every time they get elected. We need to get out of that. That's not acceptable. Not acceptable. And we can determine a different reality if we insist on it. What are you up to now? Um, I have a project called World Citizen Solutions. Uh, it is, and the whole strategy has not been revealed just yet, but at the core of it, is a new social contract, an agreement amongst people around the world, regardless of religion, of nationality, uh, any of the demarcations between us, all of that shit should melt away. We as people should make an agreement to respect each other and to respect our planet. A social contract in writing that notifies our, our respective governments that we will no longer partake in this bullshit dog and pony show that you keep presenting us. There is a better way. And it starts with us agreeing in writing, in, in real terms, in lawful terms, and in contractual terms to respect each other, everybody. No more wars of aggression, no more bullshit lies justifying some fucking war against boogeymen halfway around the world, sending American sons and daughters off to fight bullshit, illegal, immoral wars for Israel, no less, so that they can come back and commit suicide to the tune of 22 a day. How many more American sons and daughters do we want to sacrifice for fucking nefarious reasons so that we can cater to an agenda which is anything but beneficial, not only to the people of the world, but even to the people of Israel themselves? Why are we fighting wars for Israel to expand into the Greater Israel Project? This is ridiculous. It's insane. And it mocks every genuine American patriot. How fucking dare you call yourself a patriot while you allow these fucking traitors inside of the U.S. government? The entire government, almost without exception, is nothing but a den of traitors. Every fucking one of them has defied their oath to uphold the Constitution. We're allowing this shit? They need to be arrested. Now. Now. And until such time, there ain't no fucking American patriots in this country. Fucking A. Read your goddamn constitution. Shame on you. We need to fucking act now. Really. Enough now. Fucking. Last question. What do you know about Exclusion 17? What, uh, remind me. The 28, uh, well, 22 SEAL teams that were set up in the helicopter that were killed. Yeah. The three eyes in the sky were shut off. What do you know about that? Well, first off, the whole, you know, the whole, are you kidding me? Osama bin Laden was killed in, in, in Pakistan, you know, all these years later, and then we disposed of the body at sea because we respect Islam so fucking much. I mean, I mean, anybody who bought that shit, which, by the way, that coincided with uh, Obama's birth certificate being released. There was no accident there. The birth certificate of Obama was released. It was like a, a, a ridiculous, uh, you know, teenager who just learned Photoshop fraud which anyone with half a brain could have identified how fraudulent that was. And it just so happened at that time we uh, killed Osama bin Laden. You know, so it was a major distraction from a very important matter. The fact that the U.S. president was not born in this country, is not eligible to be president. That was all revealed in the fucking uh, birth uh, certificate. And coincidentally, that week, uh, we killed Osama bin Laden. Osama bin Laden was, was dead in, in December of 2001, by all accounts. Uh, many people in the know have, have testified to this fact. The SEAL team is nothing more than another example of how American sons and daughters are cannon fodder. And even the best of the best within the U.S. military, the ones that we supposedly revere as the highest and best of American sons and daughters, even these guys will be sacrificed, no problem, if they become politically, uh, you know, a, a liability. So, you know, that's just a continuation. We are all, I know this as an ex-Marine, we are nothing but cannon fodder. As Henry Kissinger said, we're nothing but dumb animals to use for policies of, you know, imperialism and so on and so forth. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Right. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you for your patience, brother.